Renault. European technology built in America. Make Renault the one to watch. Buy Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And buy Ryder Truck Rental. When you move it yourself, it's Ryder or it's wrong. Despite some freezing temperatures, the usual sellout, they've sold out Mile High Stadium every game since 1970. Despite six inches to a foot of snow, yesterday and last night, we're ready to go. The Miami Dolphins 2-1 and one against the Broncos 2-1. and one. Both teams lost their opener, but it bounced back the last two weeks. Hello, everyone. Dick Kenberg with Merlin Olsen. Welcome to Mile High Country. And these teams are coming off good wins. They're ready, and they're coming off encouraging wins. These Broncos have lived off their defense the last couple of years. Right now, they're thrilled because they scored 44 points. They're high in the last five years. The Broncos shut out Kansas City, and there it goes. High and end over end, Lorenzo Hampton of the Dolphins. The 15, the 19 is all. Miami gets the ball first, and will start just inside their 20-yard line. Lineups with Dan Marino, the opener for Miami, and this is how the starting 11 looks. Dwight Stevenson, an all-pro center. Lee and Foster at guard. Green and Geisler, the tackles. The tight end is Bruce Hardy. Mark Clayton, the sensational wide receiver, along with veteran Nat Moore for Mark Duper. Nathan and Bennett, the veterans behind Marina, but we certainly will see Hampton and Davenport a lot as well. Marino out of the backfield to Nathan, who's down after a two-yard gain at the 22. Defensively, the Orange Crush, and they can call themselves that now. They worked that out a little uh, off the field negotiation. Carter, the veteran, knows tackle with Chavis playing in another game, his second longevity in Bronco history. Jones is the top sack maker in the outside, Rulon Jones. The linebackers are Ryan. Dennis and Busick, the top tackler last year, and Woodard for the injured Tom Jackson. Louis Wright, Mike Harden at the corners. Steve Foley and Dennis Smith. Smith is back in the lineup after suffering a shoulder injury in the opener against the Rams. And for the first time, that defensive back four intact. And that pleases Dan Reeves, second and eight for Miami. Nathan. And he's corralled after a gain of three. It'll be third down and five. Let's go back and look at those matchups for a second, Dick, at offense against the defense. Big play man, Mark Clayton. They'll be trying to get him deep today. And I'm really going to keep an eye on Dennis Smith. When you have a shoulder injury like that, you've got to be very careful. Any hit could reactivate that injury. The critical matchup on the line of scrimmage. Dwight Stevenson against the nose man Carter. We'll be looking at those two. Marino in a passing situation from the Miami 25. pressure and that's the first time Marino has been sacked this year and credit Andre Townsend with it. The first three games Marino protected like fine crystal but the Broncos get him on the third play of the game. Number 61 Andre Townsend will come from the right of your screen and they've got a hot receiver out but they couldn't get that ball away. Marino's quick release did not help him there. Reggie Roby averaging 45 yards a punt. The deep man is Will Hyde at the 35 for Denver. And what a kick by Roby. A high spiral to the 30. Will Hyde, 35, over his own man to the 42-yard line. The Broncos will begin at their own 42, a 50-yard punt by Roby. A dozen yards on the return. John Elway brings the Bronco offense on the field in good field position at the Bronco 42. Bryan, an outstanding center with Hood and Howard at guard. Stuttered and Lanier the tackles. They use the H-back system, two tight ends here in Denver. We'll see Kay and Wright bookending that line with veteran Butch Johnson and clever Steve Watson on the outside. And the single running back, usually Sammy Winder, number three in the EFC rushing last year behind Elway. But they start with two backs and move Steve Sewell, the top draft choice out of Oklahoma. That's Sewell to the far left. First down at the 42. Winder, a good hole, and he has about five to the 47 before Mark Brown can make the tackle for Miami. A killer bees, and they were that to Kansas City last week, shutting out the Chiefs. Charles, a bright young nose tackle with a top sack maker, 
Betters on one end and veteran Kim Bocamp are the other. The linebackers Shiver, Brown, Ship, and Brzezinski is first start since a long holdout. Judson and Langford are at the corners. Brown and Blackwood. Glenn Blackwood at safety. Six Bs among the 11 starters on defense. Second and five. Elway to Sewell and a first down at the 40-yard line. Steve Sewell, his second catch in the NFL. The top pick out of the out of Oklahoma by the Broncos. And Dan Reeves indicated yesterday he wants to use this man more. Reeves talked about the catching ability of number 30, Steve Sewell. He said this guy could be a great wide receiver. Watch Sewell. He's just going to go down and duck to the inside. He has got great hands and knows how to get open. Has not played much as a wide receiver. Whoa, look at that. Boy, they nailed it. But he has fine, fine moves and excellent hands. That was Bud Brown who made the hit. Sewell now is way out to the right side and Butch Johnson in motion. Elway to Winder. Inside the 40 and slices to about the 38-yard line before Bob Brzezinski can make the tackle. Here, no score early. Now let's go to NFL 85. All right, Dick, with Jim Plunkett out and then Mark Wilson having turned an ankle, in comes rookie Rusty Hilger. His first attempt, his first completion, his first touchdown to Todd Christensen. Then they get an interception return for a TD to up their lead to 35-20. Here, no score early. Second down and seven for the Denver Broncos at the 38-yard line. Sewell in motion. Winder's going to throw a pass, and not a very good one. That falls in an empty spot at the 15-yard line. Watson and Sewell were both there, but Winder shot-putting that ball downfield. up the Miami defense. Well, you'd like to foul people up a little bit with that outside move, but Weiner didn't come to run. You've got to come to run if you expect to fool people with that kind of play. <laughs> that was indeed a shot put into, into open spaces. From the Miami 38-yard line, third down and seven. Out of the shotgun for the first time, Elway. <laughs> Using his mobility, going for Clint Simpson. Sampson had a possible touchdown, couldn't hang on. He was trying to keep his feet in the end zone. May have taken his eye off the ball. Very nearly six for Denver. Sampson has a touchdown in each of the first three games. One of the things that Elway has, quick feet. He can get outside. He loves to run and throws well on the run. This is right on target. But the ball is batted away at the last instant. You saw it right there. That's Langford, number 44, Paul Langford. And without that tap, it would have been a touchdown, Dick. Chris Norman to punt. And the ball kicks into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line for the Miami Dolphins. Now no score. We played uh, almost five minutes of this first quarter. And 29 degree temperatures at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Dick, I believe I said at the top of the show that uh, the Dolphins, or that uh, Denver had shut out Kansas City. Of course, that was the Dolphins, and they've been looking for their defense for quite a while. They've been living off the strong arm of Marino, but they shut out a strong Kansas City team last week. They've been averaging Kansas City over 40 points a game. They found their defense. Let's see, of course, how they're going to do in this game. Right now, though, it's Denver's defense. Bottom of the pile, 52, Ken Woodard from Tuskegee Institute. Other scores in the NFL. Tampa Bay has lost to the Lions 30 to 9. And they're in overtime in Philadelphia. The Giants and the surprising Eagles are tied at 10.
season. 64% of his passes completed last year. Set an NFL record most yardage. Set an NFL record with an incredible 48 touchdowns. Both men, Elway and Marino, picked in the first round three years ago. He was the very first man taken. Marino, the sixth quarterback, picked as the 27th player. And matched up today for the first time. Third and seven. Out of the backfield, incomplete. Intended for Nathan. He was covered by Woodard. And the defense of the Broncos gets the Orange Crush salute. Dan Marino said that when he came back, played his first game of the season, he was getting the good reads, but he simply wasn't able to deliver the ball on target. And you, you kind of had the same feeling here. Read the play properly, had the receiver open, couldn't get the ball on target. First punt went 50 yards. And this one is going to be just as good. A hummer that Will Hyde goes back to collect 23-30. And down the sidelines, Will Hyde with an excellent return. Out of bounds at the 41-yard. Returns at 17 yards, a 53-yard punt by Roby. Appeared to be good coverage, but Wilhite made a good move going to the short side of the field. And again, Elway and the Broncos start outside their own 40-yard line. Roby puts that ball so high, it's unbelievable. Butch Johnson left. Steve Watson to the right. No score. We're nine minutes and 28 seconds left in the first quarter. Winder. into the 49 before Bud Brown and Paul Langford can make the tackle. Close to 10 yards for Winder. Winder was the only player on this team to make the Pro Bowl last year. He's still the workhorse of this Bronco offense. It's just shy of a first down, so it'll be second down and in inches for the Denver Broncos. of you of seeing the Kansas City Chiefs defeat the Seattle Seahawks 28 to 7 here at Mile High Stadium in freezing temperatures. No score early. 8.45 left first quarter. Second down and in inches and Sammy Winder slamming forward for a first down at the Miami 46 yard line. Betters and Charles and Bo Camper all there to make the stop. The first two times that the Broncos have put their hands on the football they've started in good field position. Sammy Winder Getting up to get him a first down. They picked up a, an opportunity here on about the 46. Let's see if Elway doesn't try and capitalize with a pass. Winder, the long setback. It's Winder again. Trying to pick a hole and ducks into about the 43. A gain of three. Jackie Ship from Oklahoma and Bob Brzezinski, who played his football at Ohio State, make the stop. We'll be keeping an eye on both those players. Brzezinski just came into camp a week ago yesterday, Dick. And Jackie Ship, who was called by Sports Illustrated the bust of the NFL draft of 84, has come on to where they're talking about him now as being the critical player in this Miami defense. Both of them in on that last tackle. Gene Lang, 33, joins Winder in the backfield. And Elway doesn't like the call. And the Broncos will spend an early timeout. Comes with seven minutes and 32 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Other scores, a final. And that was after the Redskins jumped in front 10-0 in the first quarter. And the Bears then had a kickoff return by Galt of around 100 yards, Willie Galt. And uh, they just used that kind of speed as an indicator. And roared past the Redskins, who are now 1-3. and three. We talked to, talk to those Redskins back there. Well, they said they don't play well till their backs are against the wall. Well... <laughs> this is it. This is it. Time. One and three. Yeah, time to go to work. We talked with both Don Shula yesterday and Dan Reeves, the head coach of the Broncos, about comparing Elway and Marino. And it was interesting that uh, Elway, despite the strength of the arm, it was Shula talking about his feet that worried him most. He talked about the scrambling ability of Elway. And of course, Elway on that last uh, big play in the first drive got outside to do some nice work. There are about four or five different areas in which you compare the quarterbacks. And we'll take some time to, to do that for you a little bit later because I think it'd be interesting to you to hear what these two coaches had to say about their not only their own quarterbacks, but about the opposing quarterback. 
orange the dominant color here in Mile High Stadium. Very rarely will you see an empty seat. 75,000 plus. The 111 sellout. Second and seven. The give is to Gene Lang. And Lang from LSU, an 11th round draft pick last year, is dropped for a loss by Mark Brown. Brown shooting through. He played his football for the Boilermakers of Purdue. Gene Lang had a big week last week, surpassing his total yardage for NFL carries, but not able to go anywhere. That was a nice slicing move by Brown, who penetrated deeply into the backfield, simply wasn't fooled by that misdirection play. There's Lang's numbers, almost twice as many as he collected all last year as a rookie. Elway facing third and 11. Let's buy so well, but look at Elway move out of the pocket and go along. It is Butch Johnson incomplete, broken up at the last moment. But Brown, number 43, and that's twice that Elway's receivers have had the ball almost in their hands, only to see it knocked away by a Miami defender at the last second. You'll see here why Shula is afraid of the mobility of Elway. Look how much extra time he gets with that scramble. And then that powerful arm throw. Watch it right here, though. Bud Brown at the last second, cutting in front of the receiver and batting that ball away. Good defensive play. Chris Norman to punt. His first went into the end zone. Short. It's it toward the sidelines, and it kicks out of bounds at about the 11. It's a good kick for Norman, and the Dolphins, once again, will start deep in their own end. They've had three possessions. They've started at the 20 twice, and now the 11, whereas Denver's two possessions have begun outside their own 40-yard line. Field position critical in a game like this. Dick, let's talk about those two quarterbacks. Let's talk about the, the two quarterbacks and what these uh, coaches had to say about them. It was interesting to me that, that Reeves was saying that both arm strengths were about equal. On Shula, on the other hand, feels that Elway has the stronger arm. Reeves would give the toss on, on quickness, of course, to Elway. And uh, Shula, on the other hand, of course, gives mobility to Elway. Marino with that lightning quick arm. There it is, but dropping the ball is Ron Davenport, number 30, the rookie from Louisville sixth round draft pick he has been a most pleasant surprise in fact coming into the game leads Miami in rushing with 154 yards big guy 6'2 and 230 when he went down to the field for our opener Merlin Olsen took one look at three he said, boy he's a lot bigger than I thought he is a huge running back and has surprising speed good burst speed anytime you can get a big man like that who can catch the ball well who can run well you've got yourself a fine second down and ten for Marino Oh, nothing there for Davenport. Davenport found an orange sofa right at the line of scrimmage. And a gain maybe of a yard. Woody Bennett has been pushed into service more and more as an H-back and a tight end because of uh, Dan Johnson's absence from the lineup. Has done very well on that play. Simply ran into too much orange defense. He threw a block, but there were still two other... Denver defenders to stop Davenport. Now Marino having a shot. Vance Heflin is Vince Heflin way out to the right side. Down the middle and wide open is Joe Rose. And the tight end has a first down near the 29-yard line. 16 yards. Marino to Rose, who has his seven catch of the year. You saw Dan shake his head. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want. More of that. What a what a fine quarterback he's been at being able to spot those open receivers. He has great vision and seemed to have it right from the first day. He wasn't someone who had to fight his way into learning to read the NFL defenses. He just seemed to have those great eyes right off the start. Four touchdowns in three games. He was getting about four a game last year on his way to 48. Good play action. Screen to Davenport. Fumbles. And does Denver have it inbounds? Yes, they do at the 25-yard Jones, number 75. Welcome those of you who have been following NFL action on NBC in Seattle here in Denver. A big play with no score in the first quarter. Five minutes remaining in the period. A screen pass to rookie Ron Davenport.
Davenport. Davenport fumbles. Rulon Jones has recovered for the Broncos, and the first break goes to Denver at the Miami 25-yard line. Good play, stripping the ball, number 75, Rulon Jones. Music has a chance. It was finally Jones who pulled it in, and they have the football for the third time today in Miami territory. Jones forced the fumble and then recovered it. Elway goes to this side, complete to Clarence K is tied in. And Kay is down at the 20-yard line. But Brown, who has been in on several defensive plays already, makes another hard hit from his safety spot. You get a feeling as you watch Elway for that arm whip. He throws that ball so very hard. The concern here in Denver when so much snow was falling yesterday because last year in a very snowy Monday night game, Elway was totally ineffective, could not throw the football. He's altered his grip a little bit. This year, he's not throwing with as much power in the wet weather. Second and four, and Winder out of a crowd, and Ad lips his way for five. Sammy Winder stopped cold and just spun his way out before the whistle sounded and turned no gain into three or four. He's close to a first down inside the Miami 16. Defensively, you never stop till the whistle blows. Look right there, Betters had a hold of Winder. Could not get him to the ground. Winder just spun out and gets good yardage. That's making something out of nothing. And in turn, Bob, Bob uh, Brzezinski made an excellent defensive play, showing good speed to track him down. When Winder appeared, he might go all the way. Third and less than a yard. No way. Sneaks it in for the first down to the 13. Appeared in the for a moment that he was having trouble handling the snap. Anytime the temperature drops down below freezing, that ball starts to get hard. That is leather, and it, it starts to take on a different texture. You'll see more fumbles. You'll see more balls bouncing around today than you would on a warm day. Dallas breaking a 10 all tie in the fourth quarter to win at Houston 17 to 10. St. Louis winning 43-28 over the Packers. Saw the Giants won in overtime at Philadelphia. Good blocking for Sammy Winder, and Bud Brown again comes up to make a hit. Gain of about three. It appeared to be set up for much more for Winder, but good pursuing defense by the Killer B defense. 244 remaining in the first quarter. No score, and Denver is at the Miami 10. Of course, 
is uh, someone that uh, they're very excited about in Miami. Showed us good speed there. I think you're right. If he breaks open, he's gone. Harden just got enough of him to knock him off balance. Alloway now talking with his coaches upstairs as Dan Marino's in the spotlight. Miami trailing 7-0. 2.09 left first quarter from the 27. Hampton, or is it Nathan? To the 28 yard line and that's all the Bronco defense tough against the run Tony Nathan from Alabama the veteran getting a yard or two at the 29 yard line call it second down and eight Miami losing to Houston in the opener at the Astrodome then winning convincingly against Indianapolis and Kansas City a 31 nothing shutout last week For those of you who were not with us from the opening kickoff, Dan Marino, who was not sacked in any of the first three games, was nailed on his first pass attempt today by Andre Townsend of the Denver Broncos. Mile High Stadium in Denver. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Raiders in New England. The Raiders down have rallied in the second half to beat the Patriots 35-20 touchdown pass in just two years and four games and that's the kind of offense that has excited the Dolphins well right down to the man himself on the sidelines Don Shula since Marino took over 74 yards and three plays the 69 yard strike to Matt Moore Reves kicking toward Gene Lang Lang at the 15 oh he comes out aggressively doesn't he to the 26 maybe the 27 yard line George Little, number 99, 52, Robin Senlon with a tackle on a 23-yard return. 32 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Let's go back and look at that touchdown. Yeah, as Dan Marino dropped back, he sent, he sent Nat Moore just down over the center. Moore gets behind the defense. Dennis Smith, number 49, the man who's trying to catch up with him. And Dennis back for the first time since his shoulder injury took him out of the lineup. Could not catch up with Nat Moore. Wider on first down. And a flag is down, and we're going to get a block in the back against the Broncos along the sidelines. Jackie Ship made the tackle for Miami, and the first penalty of the game apparently against the Broncos. There it is. Gene Barth is our referee this afternoon. I'd like Clarence K through all that feedback through the public address system. As K, the second year tight end from Georgia. Already caught a nice pass in this game. More known for his blocking abilities rather than his pass catching abilities. Although Dan Reeves said it's not because he can't catch the ball. We're going to get more passes thrown to K. Final seconds, first quarter, seven all. Lang with a 10 yard run for Denver. And Marino answers with a 69 yard strike to veteran Nat Moore. 
trouble. And down he goes, and with it is a flag as Kim Bocamper, the veteran from San Jose State, from the backside, down Zellway, and we may have a hold as well. Holding call will be made, and Bo Camper beating Dave Stuttered on a play. Stuttered only had one sack, all of 84. Penalty will be declined. Second down. Dan Reeves, as is the case with Don Chula, the vice president and head coach of his team. And the AFC Coach of the Year with his excellent 13 and 3 mark last season. Nine seconds left in the quarter. Elway in the hole. Second down and long. And there's the gun, the end of the first period here at Mile High Stadium in freezing Denver, Colorado, where the score. Here at Mile High Stadium, most of them had to come with some brooms or some device to sweep off six to 12 inches of snow that fell yesterday and last night. The temperature the start today was 29 degrees. There are the numbers in the first quarter. Statistics favoring the Dolphins slightly uh, in yardage, slightly in favor of the Broncos in time and possession. And of course, dead even on the scoreboard. And the one play, 69 yard pass, was the one outstanding statistic of the quarter. Elway second down and long, 25 yards for a first down, almost intercepted by Brzezinski. It was in his hands. It'll be third and long for Denver, but first let's go to NFL 85. Dick at the Astrodome, the Oilers really gave the Cowboys a tussle, but then with less than two minutes remaining, Fred Cornwell catches this short pass from Danny White. It's the winning TD. In the process, Dallas sacked Warren Moon 12 times. That ties an NFL record. Dick. All right, Bob, here in Denver, 7-all and third and 25, staring at John Elway. The Dolphins bring in the extra defensive back, Robert Sowell. From his own end zone. Intercepted, and actually, Steve Watson, the intended receiver, broke up the play. Lyle Blackwood, 42, had a much better shot at catching the ball than did Watson. A very dangerous pass thrown by Elway. One of the things you'll notice, and you'll always see it when Elway plays, he throws the ball so hard that it kind of surprises those defensive backs. A lot of times they get it in their hands, but they cannot control it. It happened to Brzezinski just moments ago, and it happened there on that last play. But rolling against your arm and throwing deep downfield on a crossing Tremendous pattern. Tremendous power. He really can whip the ball. Chris Norman to kick. Mike Kozlowski, who played his college ball nearby at the University of Colorado, is deep for Miami. A wobbly kick. Kozlowski at his own 47. Oh, what a hit. 98, Ricky Hundley, an All-American at the University of Arizona, number one draft pick last year did not sign initially and was picked up by Denver with a number Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet. By Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. And by Quaker State. The Big Q stands for quality. Always has, always will. Back at Mile High Stadium, Miami starts for the first time in Denver territory at the 47, a seven all tie. Tony Nathan to the 40-yard line, a pickup of seven, and a fly goes down. A late hit going to be called against the Broncos. That's a dumb penalty. You don't want to give your opponent better field position than they have. Miami inside of Denver's territory. First little foul, late hit number 15, 15-yard penalty. Steve Music, inside linebacker for the Broncos. Let's go to the end of that play. You'll see Marino reading the play well, gets the ball off, and again, a very quick throw. Tony Nathan on the ground, and Busick coming, just speared him on the ground. An unnecessary shot, and the official quickly threw the flag. 15-yard penalty takes it down to the 25, and a first down for the Dolphins. 30 seconds gone in the second quarter. Nathan did not see the ball. that they want to get on Marino. They want to get in his face as quickly as possible to keep him from being able to watch downfield for those receivers. Rulon Jones all over him on that play. I'm going to run down all the scores for you. The Raiders won at New England. 
Washington loses it in Chicago, 45 to 10. 28 to 7, a surprise, Kansas City over Seattle. 17 to 10, Dallas bests Houston. We'll give you the rest after this play. Second and 10. Lorenzo Hampton for a couple of yards to the 22-yard line and back to the NFL scoreboard. In overtime, the Giants won in Philadelphia. 43-28, St. Louis a winner against the Packers. The Cardinals are tough this year. Detroit a winner at home against the Buccaneers, 30-9. 27-20, Minnesota beats Buffalo. 7-0 early, San Diego leading Cleveland out in San Diego. The Jets have a 12-0 lead at home against Indianapolis in the second. They're up to date here at 7-all. Third down and eight for Marino. Moore has a first down and maybe more. Touchdown! Matt Moore, second score. Did he step out of bounds? Down at the 12-yard line. There's a flag down over there. We may have had a peel-back block by another receiver that'll go against Miami. It is against the Dolphins to take the touchdown away. Apparently a clipping call against the Dolphins. And we'll move the ball back about to the 23-yard line. Illegal block in the back. Number 88 offense will replay the third down. Vince Heflin, number 88. But see how quickly that ball zips. That's a zinger. Nat Moore, another big catch. His was the big touchdown. There's the shot in the back. Heflin coming up to try and block for Moore. Simply smashed a man in the back. Otherwise, Moore has a touchdown. The penalty marked right at the spot where the other line of scrimmage was. So it's third down and eight again. too much as he was open out of the backfield Nathan going straight downfield so in will come Fouad Reves the rookie from the University of Tennessee boy that volunteer club last year two outstanding kickers Reves picked in the seventh round by the Dolphins has made the squad here and of course Jimmy Colquitt was the punter for Tennessee last year and he is now kicking for the Seattle Seahawks Reves this will be a 40 yard attempt and just inside the upright. Raves hits again. He's eight for nine. And Miami leads. Coaches in the NFL. Joe Collier for so many seasons here with the Denver Broncos. And Don Chuli yesterday complimenting Collier. They've got to get into his mind if I'm going to beat Denver today. You see his book. He's got all the different varieties of plays that the Dolphins run. And he's reviewing right now. Of course, uh, wants his defense to tighten up a little bit. Uh, Marino exploiting them on a couple of deep passes here very quickly. Gene Lang and Vance Johnson are deep as Raves kicks a low skitter. It's Vance Johnson. He's got brilliant speed, and he's knocked out of bounds by the kicker, Raves at the 38-yard line. He had a long touchdown catch last week. Miami match against Denver. The Dolphins lead 10 to 7. In the cold weather as a player, how did you accommodate yourself? What did you do to protect? I was one of the strange ones. I wore the same outfit in temperatures like this as I did in 100 degrees. I would put on a full T-shirt as opposed to a half T-shirt. And when it got down below zero, I wore some gym trunks underneath. But uh, most players today will have thermals on. will have something to try and keep them warm. Broncos start from their 38. Trailing by three. That's Steve Watson in motion. Down the middle to Clarence Kay in heavy traffic. Elway finding a small crack to drive that ball through three Miami defenders. Bob Brzezinski finally made the tackle. It's a first down at the 46. Elway faking the little toss right there to Winder. Now this is a planned rollout. Gives him a little extra time. And I think he threw that ball to James Wright, 87. Went right over Wright's head and into the arms of Clarence Kay. Made an extra five yards in the process. 17 yards on the throw. James Wright, the H-back. And then he'll stay in to block for Elway. Screen, the lag, and a flag is down. Incomplete on the toss. And we 
they've got a hold against the Broncos. Second time today that the orange-shirted offensive line has been called for a holding. Paul Howard very close to where that flag went down, but let's let's let the official call it. 60 offense, holding. You defensive lineman, you know the middle. Down. You know it was Howard. Really? They call Howard Buns. That's short for Paul Bunyan. You see him right at the right-hand side of your screen. He's almost tearing the shirt off of that uh, defensive lineman. That was Doug Better, 75, coming in from the outside. Paul Howard had his shirt locked up, just about pulling it off his back. First down and 20, Denver. 12 and a half minutes left in the first half here at Mile High Stadium. 75,000 fans. Again, it's 10-7 Miami. Elway off the fingertips of James Wright. Wright out of bounds there at the 50-yard line, but he didn't have the ball with him. On the far sideline, the signals are going in from the defensive coordinator, Chuck Studley. Is that Studley? <laughs> kind of hard to see. That's that's who's signaling in the defense. Studley, of course, calling the defenses. That was not Studley. But those calls go into Glenn Blackwood, 47. Blackwood, the man who is responsible for feeding the defensive changes to this secondary. In this particular situation, they've got long yardage personnel on the field. He's come off for the sideline. Wow, Blackwood, his brother, older brother, is in the deep safety slot. Second and 20. Elway scrambling. And will duck out of bounds. Doug Betters had a beat on him. He's out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Betters, what a player he is. A pro bowler last year. Picked in the sixth round out of Nevada, Reno. He played at this part of the country three years at the University of Montana before I went to Nevada, Reno. Makes his home up in Whitefish, Montana. He's the best... Uh, uh, pilot and whitefish. Uh, well, I tell you, they don't have that many up there. Uh, he's a good skier, too. And yesterday, as we were standing out in that snow, he says, uh, did you bring your, your boards with you? I said, no, but you could sure ski on a day like today. Third down. And about 18. Now make that 20. It is third down and 20. L.A. in big trouble. And he's swallowed at the 31-yard line. Two backup linemen, Mac Moore, 91, and George Little, 99. Get the sack and a 13-yard loss. They put two of those young youngsters in there when they put the four-man line and rush in, and they both got to Elway. Elway likes to do what I'd call a Tarkington roll. He'll start one way and roll out the other way. Got his feet tangled. Otherwise, I think he might have been out of, able to outrun those defensive linemen. Chris Norman... His fourth punt already today. Kozlowski deep at the 29 for Miami. Fair catch, Kozlowski at the 31-yard line. Now Miami will start at its own 31 with 11 minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the first half. Dolphins 10, Bronco 7. Slams across the 40-yard line and close to a first down. Nine yards for Nathan. And that's a real battle of wits between those two. Shula, of course, calls the offensive plays, although Marino calls a few. Collier calls the defenses. And Marino is, or Shula, when he has all of his tools so bright in the way he plays, there are the, there are the signals going in from Collier. Very sophisticated defense. I think Shula just saying, do what you want. <laughs> that's, just, that's what it looked as if it looked like there's a confusion as to who was going to stay on the field. They'll be lucky to get this one off in time. I think he's going to audible. There it is. Second and one. Actually a first down. Nathan made 10 on that first down carry. Marino almost caught by Hardy despite the fact he lost his footing. Hardy down on the grass and still almost pulled it in. He was a great athlete in these parts up at Utah, was Hardy. A little bit of a smile from Marino. You know, it's amazing that this turf is in such great shape. Last Monday and Tuesday, they had the Bruce Springsteen concert here. There were 19,000 folding chairs down on the field. And the next day, they had to go out there. You can see a little bit of a track running out across. It's just kind of a semicircle. That's where all the people walked. That was kind of an aisle where they could get to their seats. But they did an amazing job of getting this 
this field back together for this game. It's in beautiful shape. Marino under pressure. Incomplete to Nathan. Ricky Hundley and Steve Music were there for Denver. By the way, Rick Dennison, an ankle injury, and they'll check on him at halftime. But in the second quarter, Ricky Hundley getting an extended chance to play. He's been crying for just that. Hundley number 98 for the Broncos. Hundley in much the same position as Jackie Ship was. Both of them trying to learn how to fit in with a complicated defensive system of, of uh, pass defense. And Marino testing just that. Matt Moore moves into the backfield with Nathan on third and ten. Good protection and the bomb for Clayton. Too far. Dennis Smith and Louis Wright on the coverage. Now the Dolphins will have to punt as Marino goes for the long bomb and fails. One of the things you're going to see today on the line of scrimmage is Carl Mecklenburg, number 77. Watch him right here. He's faking a three-point stance, and just before the snap, he'll drop back into coverage. Watch him now as the ball is snapped. Mecklenburg looks like he's coming in and now drops back into coverage. One of those things, a quarterback thinks he's going to get one thing and then a different uh, coverage. Roby nails it high and to the sidelines and out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 16, 18-yard line. First down, Denver. And the call is to Wilder, Sammy Winder, who gets across the 20 to the 21-yard line. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Winder gains three. It is second down and seven. By the way, Chuck Studley is, in case you're wondering, a distant relative of Uncle Studley, but Collins, <laughs> notorious uncle. Oh, I was wondering. I was wondering. <laughs> Gene Lang joins Sammy Winder in the eye behind Elway. Second and seven play. Elway. Incomplete to Sampson. Covered by 96, Sandra Shiver. Bull camper applying pressure on Elway. Chuck Studley will signal in the defenses from the sideline. In this case, he's sending them in because he's making massive transfusions into that defensive lineup. Number, uh, number 47, Glenn Blackwood is really the man who is going to make the call in the huddle out there. Well, except he can't do it from the sideline. He may be nursing an injury. Usually a, uh, a defensive coordinator will have two or three people that he can trust to make the calls. The man he wants to make those calls, though, is Blackwood. Out of the shotgun, the better receiver, Gerald Wilhite, 47, joins Elway. Elway gunning the ball. Complete to Butch Johnson at the 50. shotgun. Elway is back. He looks left. He finally spots Johnson free. And look at that ball. Boy, that's just a strike and thrown with an absolute string on it all the way down the field. Two defenders not very far away, but when you throw with that kind of velocity, they have no time to recover. Well, Elway on third down. Comes up with a 29-yard pass and a first down at midfield. 10-7 Miami. 8.53 left in the half. Winder for five. For eight yards goes Sammy Winder out of southern Mississippi. Tackled by Bud Brown also from southern Mississippi. A nice play by Sammy Winder, number 23. You're going to see him right in the middle. Now watch Winder. He's going to go to his left, and he's just going to kind of take his time up in here and then explode up through the line. Watch him now as he'll work up in there. They've offset the line. They're stunning away from him. Winder just did a little bit of a wiggle up in there behind the blocking of number 88, Clarence K. Sammy knows how to use that uh, little shake, doesn't he? That was a good illustration of how that back using his patience to find some room. Under pressure, Elway complete to Watson. And with a flag down, Watson is to the 31. There may be a face mask. 11 yards if. the difference between the John Elway of his rookie season and even early last year and this year. He said, when, when I walked up 
there, I had to do a lot of thinking. He said, now I don't have to think. He said, when I feel him coming and I know I've got to get the ball off, I don't have to worry about it. It's gone. And there it is right there. Perfect pass. Nice play over there by Steve Watson, who's, I think, one of the most acrobatic receivers in all of the NFL. That was his first catch, 11 yards on the play and a first down. Draw on Jim Lang, and Lang was the most explosive of the four Bronco backs. So Winder, Sewell, and Wilhite, and he showed you that quick acceleration for short yardage. Bo Camper made the tackle Miami. You see Lang coming off the sideline. It'd be welcomed over there. Reeves doing a good job of uh, mixing his plays. He, he'll list his plays, carries a piece of paper. He'll have his priorities there on first and ten. What do I want to run? Second and five, which is this situation. A nice situation for the offense. What plays would I like to run in this situation? Both Butch Johnson and now Watson. Watson from the slot in motion. Second and five. He's going to scramble and go into that slot. Now, it's where the ball is when he starts to slide. You might think he should get progress to the 20. They'll mark it where the ball was down when he made the slide. A flag is down as well. Mark Brown was the closest Dolphin. It's going to be a motion call against the Broncos. Illegal motion. Offense number 81 went in motion before the second man sit set. Illegal shift on number 81. Now this can happen to you. It's such a complex offense. Now you can't have two men moving at the same time. Steve Watson has to wait until Jim Wright, who's the H-back, settles down into his position. He didn't wait long enough, and they get the five-yard penalty and neutralize a nice gain on Elway's scramble. Second down and 10. Will Hyde in the backfield. Nathan all alone. Can they catch him? 40. 
Woodard can't get him. Yes, he does. Ken Woodard, a linebacker. The ball is down at the 12-yard line. The ball is down at the 12-yard line as Nathan caught by linebacker Ken Woodard. A 75-yard play. Two great lessons here as you watch. First, a tremendous play-action fake by Marino froze the defense and allowed Nathan to get free. But now watch Ken Woodard. He won't give up, and he keeps coming, and he just gets a handful right here of Jersey and dives down on the back of the legs. The ball bounced away after he hit the ground, so they won't call a fumble. But what a great recovery by Woodard. An error to begin with, perhaps not by Woodard, but a great recovery by Woodard to get him down. 75-yard play positions Marino and Miami, a first down at the 12. smothered after a three or four yard game. Steve Foley, 43. First man in, Harden there, Rulon Jones. In case you joined us late, Ron Davenport fumbled at his own 25. Rulon Jones recovered and the Broncos went into score the first touchdown of the game on a 10 yard run by Gene Lang. Then Marino to Moore, a 69 yard touchdown pass. Made it seven all. Reves a 40 yard field goal, 10 to seven Miami until Winder's seven yard touchdown run that kept an 82 yard plays and now Miami trying to strike right back with 343 left in the half. Nathan stopped cold at the six yard line. Mike Harden and Dennis Smith. Well we gave you the National League Baseball. Here's the American League side of the baseball story on this Sunday. Minnesota defeats Kansas City six to three. The Royals were in a first place tie with the Angels. Let's see how the Angels did. They won at Cleveland nine to three. So California leads by a game going to Kansas City tomorrow night a big four game series. Yankees lead Baltimore for well, they win the first game four nothing over the Orioles. Second game they have a three nothing lead early. We'll check Toronto. Big play. field goal kicker for Miami will come in to try for three. That has to be disappointing for Marino not to get more out of that drive. Watch number 57 Dwight Stevenson on the nose working on Townsend one on one doing a good job. Good job on the top by Cleveland Green to tackle. Look from that angle like it caught it but you could see it bounce even from where we are. Dick. Struck to hold for Reves 24 yard attempt. And he's got it. Reves is two for two. He's nine for ten with the Dolphins. His only miss was from 52 yards into the wind. So he's been nearly perfect. Shula said that one was on me. I never should have called it. The wind was howling and just snapped that ball after it left his foot. So Reves hits the 24-yard field goal to get three out of a drive that featured the 75-yard pass to Nathan. You see an excellent hold by Don Strzok, and that relationship of snapper, holder, and kicker is so important. We'll talk about that when we see Denver's kicking unit on the field because Keith Bishop, who usually snaps for them, is uh, nursing an injured knee. And because of that, uh, they've, got, they've got Hyde out there uh, snapping the ball, Glenn Hyde. And I think that's going to be a little bit of an adventure. If I were him, I don't think I would have uh, slept very well last night. Glenn Hyde, a 34-year-old veteran. They call him Lumpy, and for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> NFL 85 will have all of the details of this fourth week of the NFL season for you. All the scores and top plays. Oh, there were some big ones. And for the Chicago Bears, who remain unbeaten 4-0, a long kickoff return for a touchdown by Willie Galt. Took them from 10-0 down and got them on their way to a big victory over Washington today. Reves with 2.46 remaining in the half. Vance Johnson, a speedster from Arizona, out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They call Johnson 82, the fastest Bronco ever. He ran a 4.38 on grass during the summer drills. And uh, he is going to bring some lightning to the Bronco attack. 
They're using him also in different situations in the backfield. I think you're going to see a lot of him today. But he has such great speed that that'll stretch that defense a little bit. That's something that the Broncos have, have really lacked here. He, he just missed the uh, U.S. Olympic team in the long jump. Toronto apparently will beat Milwaukee, so Yankees have won the first of two, but the Blue Jays keep right on and going. They're flapping their wings toward the playoffs. Elway gets out of Shiver's, Shiver's grasp, and the incomplete pass may have been the best choice. James Wright, 87, the target. A good battle going on on the nose. Billy Bryant, number 64, the center right here, working one-on-one -on, -one on Big Mike Charles, a nose tackle. You get a chance to watch them. Let's look at them right now. Very critical for uh, for Bryant to control that nose man. Charles has got a little bit of a size advantage, but Billy keeps good position on him. <laughs> Just stay, hey, you're not getting to my quarterback. Running him back and forth in there. Just like basketball, trying to keep your man away from the basket. Second and 10, 229 left in the hand. Elway breaks out of the grass. Now he gets a block. Oh, what a block by Lang. And it's incomplete upfield to Clarence K at the 45. Boy, Elway doing a great job of extricating himself from the Miami pressure. Chuck Studley said before the game, the key for us is controlling Elway, containing him, keeping him in the pocket. Well, they haven't done it here. He's pulled away twice and gotten away from sure tackles. Watch him here. Two men he gets away. That was Charles, 71, the last one. There was the block you talked about uh, right there. And now, oh, what a shame. He gets free, gets some time, gets an open receiver, and drops it short. That's frustrating. It'll be third down and 10 for the Broncos at their 25. Approaching the two-minute warning. Elway came through with a critical third down completion. Remember to Butch Johnson, the last possession, and that went on to a touchdown to give Denver the lead. This time it's to Vance Johnson, and he dives close to the first down. That's going to be a little shy, however, at about the 34 and a half. Paul Lankford was there for Miami. You'll hear this crowd yell. They'd love to see him hold it down here. Go for it. At first, in Denver around 30 degrees a dandy first half and the Broncos leading 14 13 with two minutes remaining seven substitutions coming in defensively for Miami as Chuck Steadley uh, rushes some troops in to try and, and maybe get after this punt I think what he expected was maybe they were going to take the punt and then at the last moment seeing the punter in there sending the punt return team fourth down and one Slicing one, and it's Blackwood with a fair catch and bobbles and holds at the 25-yard line. Glenn Blackwood and the Dolphins with 153 left in the half. That's a lot of time for Dan Marino, who's hit on two big bombs today, 175 yards to Nathan, another 69 yards, and that one for a touchdown to Nat Moore. Let's check the late games along with this one, where it's 14-13 Denver over Miami. Cleveland and San Diego are at the half, tied at seven in San Diego. 15 to 10, the Jets lead Indianapolis in the second. The Rams have a 10-3 lead in the second. The Rams trying to join Chicago as the only two unbeaten teams after four games. And San Francisco with a 7-0 lead against the Saints in the second. Clayton to the right. Moore to the left. Nathan in the backfield. It's Nathan. For about three. What a good all-purpose back Tony Nathan is from Alabama. Year after year, he's usually the number two rusher and the number two receiver for the Dolphins. He's always there. He came into this game averaging six yards a carry. Now that's impressive. Marino. Oh! Almost picked off by Andre Townsend, number 61. The nose tackle. That's a lineman's dream. Townsend had read the screen, which was going out to Nathan, drifted out in front of it. Marino putting a little zip on that ball. Watch it now. Townsend right in the middle of your screen, reads that screen, and you see him exploding to the outside. That ball right into, oh, <laughs> that's Heartbreak City. He could see the goal line there. Townsend, the second-year man from Mississippi, nearly had six big ones for Denver. It's third and seven. Four wide receivers. Blitz. And Marino.
Moreno reads it, gets it off to Joe Rose and a first down at the 37-yard line. And if there is one thing that separates Marino from so many other quarterbacks in the league, it's that ability right there to read and get the ball off so quickly. Hell, highly heralded out of Stanford, the number one draft pick. Marino, he was the sixth quarterback taken, although a first-round pick. Look what's happened, 84, nine yards per pass, Elway 6.84. And the numbers are reversed in 85. Marinos have dropped over two yards, and Elways have gone up significantly. Marino not able to get the ball as deep without Duper in the lineup, and Elway getting more confident in the deep game all the time. First down, 14-13 Miami trails. Down the middle to Rose, and Mike Harden blindly reaching out, and the ball was there, and he was the right man in the right spot for the Broncos. Harden from the University of Michigan. Or he is uh, continuing his studies in the off year. He's two and a half years from a law degree. Joe Rose with a couple of big drops in that game last week. Uh, he said uh, took a little ribbing and a little booing from that crowd down in Miami. That's a tough catch. He'd spun around. He was on the ground. There was a hand in front of him. That ball was low. But that's still the kind of ball that great receivers catch. Tough on Marino. Down the middle to Clayton, his first catch. And he is tough in the open field, all the way to the 34 yard line. First down, Miami. Mark Clayton, who had a record 18 touchdown catches last year. That's his first of this afternoon. They're quickly to the line of scrimmage. Marino is calling an audible. 53 seconds left, low snap, and he had to dump that one off. Nathan thought he was held, and now a late flag comes in as Ken Woodard, 52, apparently had some of Nathan's jersey. They're going to call Mecklenburg, perhaps, for a late hit on the quarterback. It looked like he had a chance to avoid him. 52 oh, no, it's not 52. You were right. <laughs> well, it could have been called the other way, too. That was borderline. They ignored Mecklenburg's late hit, but... Nathan appealing, and no one saw it except official far downfield, and Woodard is ticketed for five. five yards and a first down. Of course, that brings with it a first down and also stops the clock. Mecklenburg blitzing. Now, they're using him in a lot of different positions. They use him at all four linebacker positions moving across the field. They'll put him down anywhere along the line. He came very hard. Nobody touched him. That's why Marino had to unload the football so quickly. Smith making the tackle of Nat Moore after a five-yard gain. Marino calls timeout very quickly to try and save what's left on the clock. That'll leave Miami with one timeout, 41 seconds showing, officially 41. 14-13 Denver leads. Marino, we were asking him yesterday, I said, is it really true that the first word you said was ball? He said, well, that's what my dad says. And his dad had a great influence on him. He was the one who taught him not to take his hand back too far when he threw the ball. He wanted to help develop strong wrists early in life so he could throw the football. He did a good job. He certainly has. If you look at this little picture right now, you see something interesting. It's Strzok who's doing the talking, not Shula, over there in that three-way conversation with Marino. Don Strzok, a very intelligent quarterback, and he's giving Marino some of the input. I'm sure it's been shared with Shula, and you saw the nod from Don Shula. But there's tremendous value to having a very bright quarterback on the sideline, especially one like the Stroke, and that's his nickname. And you saw him talking right there to Marino, giving him some advice and probably calling a play for him. Maybe uh, the best relief man in the NFL, not only because of his talent, but his attitude and experience and how he really works in the system. He doesn't sit on the sideline and pout because he's not playing. the tight end beats Harden and Miami takes the lead again for Rose his first touchdown of the year vindication for Joe Rose and you see Marino coming after him to congratulate him big Doug betters 
Mike Harden, 31, trying to cover man-to-man. -man. Rose does not have brilliant speed, but boy, does he know how to run a pattern. And look where this football is thrown. Now, when you throw a ball that well, even tight coverage is just not going to get the job done. 24 yards on the play. Reves to try the extra point. Ooh, low, but it skids through, and Miami leads by six at 20 to 14. Joe Rose grabs a breather here in Mile High Country with 35 seconds remaining before the gun. Last year, Joe was in the hospital and then supposed to have his shoulder operated on, got walked himself out of the hospital, ended up being in Shula's doghouse for a little while. This kind of play will get him out. You see Dan Reeves on the near sidelines wearing a shirt and tie. That's something new this year. Reeves decided that maybe if he put on a shirt and tie, it would be a symbol of holding in his emotions, uh, not getting quite so excited or as angry. And he said, I'm going to wear that shirt and tie. It just reminds me physically that I've got to behave on the sidelines. Well, he and Elway have a bet, and both of them trying to control their tempers. Uh, they have a little bet going between the two of them, $100 every time they lose their cool. I think uh, they say it's about even right now both have had a few outbursts but uh, Elway said he had to give Reeves odds he said he loses his goal more than I do okay. 20 to 14 as Dan Marino has hit on a couple of touchdown passes the two touchdowns scored by Denver both on the ground Johnson and Lang are deep Reves very high to Johnson's side at the goal line Johnson trying to thread his way through brought down by Mike Kozlowski at the 22 yard line and a flag. Let's, Let's go see, back no and flag. look at that last touchdown again. You'll see good protection. That's Townsend trying to get at Marino there. Marino back sets had Joe Rose all the way knew that they were going to get a single coverage on him and got him the football. We were checking the throwing action by the two quarterbacks, Elway and Marino, because they are distinctly different. We get a chance we're going to let you see it in a little a slower close-up look. Elway down the middle, complete. That's Clint Sampson to the 36-yard line. Hurry up, go the Broncos with 21 seconds of all timeout. 21 seconds of just too much uh, time to be taken for Elway to hurry his team to the line of scrimmage, so he decides to spend the Broncos' second timeout. Well, one of the differences between these two quarterbacks in the pocket, Dick, is that Elway likes to get, in fact, has to get those feet set before he can throw. And uh, Marino, on the other hand, he doesn't care where his feet are. He just delivers the ball. But Elway has that almost has a, a pitcher's follow through, reaches way back and rifles that ball forward with a tremendous downward shot of the arm. And that's one of the reasons he's had trouble uh, hanging onto the football when it's wet, as he did last week in Atlanta. Let's look at the numbers right here. Completion percentage is very close. And with, with yardage like that, Marino's numbers, and we showed you the comparison on average per catch with the kind of numbers he's had today. That'll kick that way up, may get it back on par with what it was last year. Marino has already had 13 games over 300 yards. Elway, only two. An interesting uh, stat for the two young men. Of course, it's a different system in Miami and Denver, but that's, that's one number that Elway has in his favor, or that Marino has in his favor. First down from the 36. Gunning the ball deep on the sidelines to Watson. Out of bounds at the Miami 49-yard line. We talked about the comparison. Both men were outstanding high school baseball players. One was an infielder, Marino, and he throws like one. One was an outfielder and pitcher, Elway. He was the outfielder. Watch, he starts higher, gets way back. He gets that ball cocked way back behind his head and delivers. Look at Marino. He starts with the ball lower, and his move is a much quicker one, more like an infielder's throw. And almost straight back and boom like a dart you don't have that reach that feeling of reaching with that ball that you have with Elway when Marino throws the football it helps him be quicker with the delivery now it's Elway on the rubber now with 13 seconds left sidelines to Watson trying to fight off John Swain number 29 fans thought there should be a flag and there is one but it's over on this side of the field not where that contact was made between Swain and Watson. It's over on the side of the field where Butch 
Johnson was going head to head with William Judson, number 49. Interference, 87. 87. That can't be right. 87. Oh, shit. I don't think Shula wants that number. He said, "What? Who?" There we is don't no have 87. There's a 47. I think it was on. I, well, there's a 47. It could have been on him, but. I don't even think he's out there right at the moment. They've got their uh, long yardage defense, a nickel defense on the field. In fact, more than a nickel. Got two, four, six, 87 is Dan Johnson. He'll be activated <laughs> next week. He said, hey, I got enough problems. Wait till I get in the game. <laughs> Dan's on the sideline. He said, you can't call it on me. I'm not on the field. Nine seconds left from the 39. Elway looking for perhaps a quick out and a field goal chance, motioning for Sewell to move inside. And Elway going to run. Behind a good block, and that stops the clock four seconds and gives Rich Carlos a chance for a long field goal. A nine yard run by Elway, who led the AFC quarterbacks in rushing last year, gained 237 yards. Extreme long yardage situation, a smart call by Reeves. Realized that against seven DBs, your chance of completing a pass not good, just getting enough. And you see the bare foot of Rich Carlos last in the last two years has never put anything on that foot even on the cold days he said i did put a sock on when it was 20 below in kansas city 47 yards away and he has hit the post again and it bounces out rich carlos who has had a pension for that an affinity for hitting the upright hits the left side a flag is down we'll check the call some of the dolphins are on their way to the locker it's against miami there's a break for the Broncos. 12 in on the field of play, and Don Shula, whose teams consistently through the years were the least penalized in the NFL, don't often get that kind of call. They don't make those kinds of mistakes, and you know someone will pay for it, and it might just be the rookie George Little from Iowa, their third-round draft pick. So Carlos will get a second chance. Carlos is working on a string of 10 in a row. He got 12 on the field. We can count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There they are, indeed. They've got them there. This one will be 42 yards. It is. So he kisses it off the other upright and caroms it through. Looking at it from the end zone, you can see how close this one came, just nursing itself over and gets the benefit of the kiss. So that is the end of the first half. Rich Carlos hits his 11th in a row. And the score is now Miami 20, Denver 17. So this Mile High Stadium crowd in Denver treated to a action-packed first half. The long throws of Dan Marino. He had a 75-yard play and a 69-yard touchdown to Moore. The Broncos using their running game primarily with Elway mixing in a pass when it counted most. And that's the end of the first half. Protected in excellent condition, but the temperature is dropping here in what uh, some of the locals call the real Orange Bowl. It's uh, Orange Day. The Bronco Orange very much in display at the intermission. The, the Bronco from his box, snow flurries starting to fall at Mile High Stadium. He has to feel a bit happier, as do the 75,000 partisans here with that Rich Carlos kiss off the upright that pulled the Broncos to within 20 to 17 at the intermission. Now, that does give a team a lift. It gives a team a lift, and I think it, it frustrates and kind of takes the emotion level down a little bit for Miami as they head into the locker room. But, of course, that's certainly not a secure score. <laughs> a three-point lead doesn't get a hold up in this game, believe me. The play that I found most fascinating 
fascinating in the first half was one that did not score a touchdown, got Miami a field goal, but it's a four-point defensive play for Denver. Nathan breaks clear, but watch 52 Woodard. He saves four points because Nathan had a sure touchdown. The Dolphins had to settle for a field goal. It's also good to remember that that's the second time today that they were able to get behind the Denver defense, something that has not been easy so far this year. That's right. Nat Moore earlier, 69-yard touchdown was clear, as was Nathan, and he had the speed to get it into the end zone. Denver will get the ball first to start the second half. Raves to kick toward Johnson and Lang. Again, it's toward the rookie, Vance Johnson. Right down on an excellent play by Robert Sowell, number 45, the star of the Dolphins special teams. Now they'll start from inside the 20-yard line, the first half statistics. Statistics, as you might expect, quite even in the ball game. although the Dolphins, with those two big, big plays, have the edge in passing yardage and total yardage in passing numbers. Fairly similar, both sides, turnovers, a big turnover for the Dolphins that hurt them. And, of course, the score, 20 to 17, with uh, Denver leading. Miami leading, 20 to 17. Miami leading, I'm sorry. Butch Johnson in motion. Sammy Winder, and he has a first down at the 31-yard line. And they wrestled out of bounds by Bud Brown. Why, Winder and Brown, who were teammates with the Eagles at Southern Mississippi, they have encountered one another many a time in this game. The wrestling match going on. You've seen Winder use that little shake as he gets up inside, gets away from Glenn Blackwood, number 47, makes good yardage on the play. But Brown does do a good job of necktying him there. He got a hold of him and stripped him out of bounds. Give Winder a couple of more yards. He didn't step out of bounds till he was to the 33-yard line, a gain of 15. Steve Sewell is out of your picture, wide to the left, and Elway's looking for him. Instead, he goes back across to Watson, and a first down at the Miami 49. Paul Langford, 44 with a tackle. Watson, a free agent from Temple. It's quite an interesting story how he got to Denver. Actually, any team could have taken him. He was not drafted. He said, I knew at that time that Haven Moses was going to retire. He said, I've always had a lot of confidence. I thought, well, I'll go to Denver. I'll replace him. Who knew Steve Watson? Well, now everyone does. He has over 250 catches. At 14, the lead Denver coming into this one. First down, 49. speed just stutter stepping looking for a little hole and then shooting through for seven other scores these are the late games and Cleveland now has moved in front of San Diego in the third quarter the Jets have an eight-point lead against the Colts in the third the Rams looking for four and oh tough game 10-6 against Atlanta and San Francisco and New Orleans are tied at 10 in the third quarter that's a surprise Trailing by three, the Broncos in Miami territory. And Winder cut down on a good defensive play. Mark Brown, the third-year linebacker from Purdue, stops Winder just as he was heading into the secondary. It'll be third down and two. We've mentioned that battle going on on the line of scrimmage. Watch 64, Billy Bryan on Mike Charles, 71. And he's getting a little help in there from one of the guards. Well, actually, that's James Wright, Daddy Wright, coming in from his position from the outside. Right now, Bob Brzezinski is over there on the far sideline. You've got to wonder how long this game is going to be. I don't think he's quite in shape yet over there, Dick. Well, he just joined the club uh, a week or so ago after the long holdout. Winder again has what appears to be a first down. It'll depend on where they mark it. If it's at the 38, that's a first down. Sanders Shiver, Carson Newman, and Jackie Schiff, two linebackers, make the stop. But not until Winder had uh, brought the ball to the 38, they mark it a first down. Jackie Ship has come a long ways, but I was talking to Don Shuley yesterday, and I said, now, you mean that Chip has really mastered this uh, system of, of working in the secondary and the uh, passing defenses? He said, well, mastered is kind of a strong <laughs> word to use. But I think there's still a little concern. He's still a young man, and he did not play on a team that used complicated passing defenses when he was in college. Steve Sewell in the game, far to the right. Elway, going to keep it himself. 
to safety across the sidelines at about the 33. That'll be a gain of five or six. <laughs> Maybe we could catch it on the sideline. They have a kicking net over there to practice their kicking into it. As Elway charged onto the sideline, one of the photographers, Sonny, get out of the way, ran right into the net. Looked like a fish being <laughs> snatched up out of the water over there. Get him in the boat. Yeah, they got him to drag him in. Smart play by Elway. Nothing downfield. Again, using those quick feet. And his mobility has been a big difference in this game so far today, Dick. Trailing 20 to 17. It's second down and a short five. Ball at the Miami 33. Elway, quickie outside to Wilhite. Gerald Wilhite. And he has a first down at the Miami 24. Nine more yards for the Broncos. Shiver made the hit. And the clock stopped with 11.52 left in the third quarter. Will Height, a first-round draft pick a couple of years ago, and in Denver, they've kind of had to bite the bullet a little bit. He has never really come to the, the kind of stature that they expected out of him. He works hard, he is productive, but he is not the great back that they thought they had drafted. Kind of miss those uh, end-zone backflips he used to do early on. This is Gene Lang, 20, and he's to the 19, maybe the 18-yard line. Lang at 5'10 and 196. That's almost the prototype for the running backs for Dan Reeves. They're all about 5'10, 5'11, right at the 195 to 200 pound mark. Well, and he'll rotate them in and out of the backfield. He believes in using a lot of people, as does Don Shula. Both these offensive teams and defensive teams, for that matter, keep a lot of people involved. A lot of substitutions on and off the field. Inside the 20 yard line, Miami's lead of three being threatened by this Bronco drive. Ninth play of the drive to start the second half. Second and five. Winder. Look at all the blockers. And he's on his way to the goal line and stopped at the one foot line. Again, it was Bud Brown to deny the touchdown, but first and goal. see him. The first one by Steve Watson, 81, who's coming out right there. And then Lang, 33, makes the second block. It's one-on-one. -on -one. 49 gets it. Johnson misses the shot there. They finally trap uh, they finally trap Winder, but he rolls into the end zone. They mark it just outside of the goal line. Boy, that uh, Lang has thrown two destructive blocks in this game. First and goal. second chance the other way and he made good <laughs> well, these Denver fans certainly don't lack for support of their home team you can see their signs uh, as well as their bright colors and I'm sure that this has really become a comfortable home for for Dan Reeves right next to him on the sideline the young man in the dark hat that's Dan's son Lee he's a fine linebacker here for the number one high school team up at Cherry, uh, uh, Cherry Hills High School this one is no good. So Carlos, and it appeared that Langford pressuring, but Carlos might have hit just the very top of that upright. That's a significant point. That means there are three points out instead of four. That could be a big... The opening kickoff, marching 82. 
22 yards in 10 plays to get the lead 23 20 but Rich Carlos misses the extra point the second try after a five yard penalty now the kickoff and he hammers this one high toward Lorenzo Hampton Hampton from Florida never played in the snow before breaks one tackle and another but he's dragged down at the 15 yard Today's game is brought to you by Mercury Cars, the shape you want to be in. By United Airlines, you're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. And by NCR, who bring you a better personal computer. This game that has found each side celebrating short live leads it now belongs in Denver's side at 23-20. The Dolphins begin from their 14. Marino over the middle to the tight end Bruce Hardy and he has close to first down yardage at the 24. Now plenty of scoring here in Denver. Let's see what's happening elsewhere. We go to NFL 85. All right, Dick, at the Meadowlands, the Colts have closed it up with the Jets. This pass from Mike Pagel to Pat Beach covers 15 yards. He makes an unscheduled landing on his head, but he's okay. The Jets have already rallied back there at the 30-yard line of Indianapolis looking to cushion it. So Mike Pagel with a couple of touchdown throws for the Colts today. Second and one. Woody Bennett, veteran fullback, blocked out of bounds by Steve Foley after a first down near the 30. It's Carlos. Well, he must be wondering if there's something magnetic about those uprights. He just seems to have every kick drawn at least more than his share to an upright. When he misses, he misses by so little and often by hitting an upright. His field goal string of 11 in a row is intact after he hit the upright. Penalty allowed him a second chance, made good. Then he makes the extra point, five-yard penalty. It appeared he hit the top of the upright on that one. Tony Nathan, Woody Bennett behind Marino on first down. To Heflin, and a good catch at the 40-yard line. Excellent timing between Marino and Vince Heflin, he had made his cut before he saw the ball. A chance to look at a couple of things. We're going to watch Marino come to the line and get a chance to see him take his pre-snap look. And then also, the, something interesting to me, Marino is never still as he comes to that line of scrimmage. He's always shifting back and forth, kind of wobbling his hips as he comes up to the line. We'll take a peek at that. I, Dick, that's something. He almost looks like a dancer out there, shifting his weight back and forth. Yeah, here he comes, number 13. That one is incomplete. Intended for Duriel Harris, who has rejoined his Dolphin teammates after a year hiatus. Played with Cleveland and Dallas last year. Tony Nathan, we understand, with an ankle injury and may not return. Duriel Harris, uh, I asked him, I said, did you have to get new jerseys? And they said, no, you know, he was here long enough. We kept some. We had three of his jerseys, even had one with a couple of pockets for him to put his hands in. He was in Shula's doghouse when, he's le when he left, but they say he has worked so hard since he got back. I don't blame him. Might be his last chance, Dick. Lessons learned. Second and ten. Nathan, well, I guess he will be back. I believe they were talking about Mark Clayton. It's Clayton who's hurt an ankle. And uh, certainly if, if that's a serious injury, that would be bad news because Clayton is that speed man that they've used to get deep. They need to stretch a defense. It's hard with the kind of receivers they've got in there. Harris does not have that speed any longer. Nat Moore, it is Clayton. They now confirm that from the sideline. Well, officially Mark Clayton out for the day. So you take Mark Duper and Mark Clayton, the Mark brothers out of that Miami offense and it's a different uh, set of receivers different game plan for Marino who looks now at third and 11 out of the backfield Matt Moore good move by Moore and the veteran skillfully has a first down at the 45 of Denver see that was a nice play Nathan was open too, both over the middle speed is a relative thing 
when I said they don't have speed, I'm not referring to the fact that they can't run. Nat Moore has speed. He does not have the kind of speed that Duper and Clayton have, but he sure knows how to get open. Runs a great pattern here. Uses that quickness to get away from a chance there. It's finally Foley, 43, that gets over and strips him down. But what a nice play, and Miami is driving. Rams now leading Atlanta 17 to 6 in the third. New Orleans has taken the lead against the 49ers, and that's at Candlestick. Nathan wrapped up by Busick, but not until Nathan had picked up yardage six yards to the 39. Marino continues to impress me. Two big Broncos right up in his face on that play. And he just ignores him. He goes ahead and throws that football. One thing that he does so well is his ability to sift around in that pocket. He seems to just have a, a second sense about where to move to get a little extra time, and yet keeps his concentration downfield. Into the 24-year-old eyes of Dan Marino. Nathan ran into his own blocker. Stopped for no game. getting a lot of duty with uh, Dennison out for the entire afternoon. And that's good news for him. He feels that he is ready to play. And what a big horse he is. And I mentioned earlier, much like uh, Shep, at the linebacker for Miami, just has not had a chance yet to really master the, the defenses, in particular the passing defenses, and they worry about a mistake. But uh, we haven't seen a big one from him today. Perhaps we haven't seen it, but we have not seen a big one. Big call, third and three and a half. Blitz. And it's batted in the air and intercepted. Ken Woodard. No, no, they say he trapped it. But Woodard, who had made one spectacular save, denying a touchdown, sprinting from behind to catch Tony Nathan, almost made a circus interception. The ball away from us. We couldn't see his body in the way, but the official on the other side of the field said no, he did not, but almost made a one-handed catch. Joe Collier promised, promised to blitz sparingly today, but that was an all-out blitz. You saw the ball being bounced away. Andre Townsend, who had the sack in the first quarter. Townsend coming around from behind. Will Hyde is at the 10-yard line for Denver. Roby aiming that one, and a flag is down. Out of bounds was not a good kick for Roby. It would be marked at the 16. Let's see the penalty. It appeared that someone on the far side for Miami broke before the snap. Let's go back and, and look at that last play. Perhaps we can see who knocked that ball away. A lot of pressure in Marino's face. motion, left in on offense. Penalty Here's refused. the last of that play. We're looking from the back side. We're not in position to see where they've got his hands on him. You could see him fighting to get control of that football. The official to call it. Marino, and it's Winder for short yardage, a yard. Doug Better, 75, the veteran making the hit. See George Little, the rookie from Iowa, playing on the nose for Mike Charles. They're very high on Little. Really uh, works from the outside. They put him at nose guard with all the injuries. Bob Baumhauer, the veteran out, and Little has shown he can play all three front positions. The Dolphins have had to scramble. A lot of their frontline players uh, on that injured reserve. Uh, one of them, Charles Bowser, they had no room on IR. They had to keep him on the active roster even though he can't play. Draw play. Gene Lang to the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and six Denver. The score, 23-20 Broncos. Let's go to NFL 85. Dick, right after the cold touchdown we showed you a moment ago, Ken O'Brien brought the Jets back. This scramble took them to the doorstep, and then a moment later, Tony Page scored from the one. The Jets are in front now, 25-17. Back to Denver. All right, Bob, Ken O'Brien, who was part of that tremendous 83 quarterback draft that featured Elway number one. O'Brien was picked for him, Jim Kelly, and eventually Marino the sixth. This is Vance Johnson. White turned the corner and is knocked out of bounds at the 24. That'll be shy of the first down. That's a sweet play. That's his first carry out of the backfield. And 
Of course, he was a running back in college, and the shift to wide receiver has been a considerable one. He's still learning the pattern, said he's going to get more effective. Of course, he took a, a familiar handoff instead of a pass on that play. He's about a half yard short of a first down, but that deep in Denver territory, Dan Reeves taking no chances, and Chris Norman to punt for the sixth time. Been consistent, 39 yard average, the longest 42. Kozlowski back at the 38 of Denver. This is the best kick of the day for Norman. Kozlowski chased back a late fair catch, and then he's bumped into, and that'll be a flag. Number 25, Daniel Hunter. 51-yard punt by Norman. It was a late fair catch by Kozlowski, but the official felt Hunter had enough time to get out of the way. It was still a legitimate no signal. Foul on the play. He was blocked in. No foul. Oh, no penalty. He was blocked into Kozlowski. Let's look at it. Let's see if we can see it. Now, the official ruling that, that Hunter was trying to get out of the way. There you see the bump right there. Oh, and he did. He hooked his foot. That's snow on the field, but uh, confetti. 351 remaining third quarter. Denver, 23. Miami, 20. And more. The veteran goes to the left. He has four catches for 98 yards to lead the Dolphins. Vince Heflin to the right. Dan Marino, first down at his own four-yard line. Actually, the 25. Play action to Nathan. The throw goes out to Moore, and Harden secures him at the 36-yard line. That'll be close to a first down. I believe he's got it. And what a tremendous advantage it is for Don Shula to have veterans like Nat Moore on his squad. And Nat Moore played sparingly when Duper and Clayton were yeah. ripping everyone up last year. Now suddenly with injuries, he is the main man again and responding beautifully here today. Don Shula has a good reserve. Bank of Shula has an excellent reserve. Knows how to use his talent too, Dick. Woody Bennett moves up onto the tight end position, leaving Nathan in the backfield first down. A quick pitch of Moore, or that's Heflin trying to slice through the secondary. That was a tough throw for Marino. Heflin thought he should have had it. Let's go to NFL 85 and Bob Costas. Okay, Dick, with Dan Fouts sidelined by a knee injury, the Browns now lead the Chargers 21-7 in the fourth quarter. This TD covers 10 yards. Danielson to Kevin Mack. Second touchdown of the day for Mack. The Browns in front by two TD. Dick? Good news for Cleveland. Bad news for the Chargers. They're not the same team without Fouts. He is the one key ingredient. Second and 10. Marino and Miami at the 36. Over the middle to Hardy, the tight end, dropped at the 45, a yard short of the first down. Woodard and Smith collaborating. It'll be third and one. Bruce Hardy, a durable performer in his eighth year. Really only has missed one game in all that time. And for the kind of hammering that he has taken, and he is one that mixes it up pretty good. Does a lot of blocking in there, a lot of moving around. Pretty good record. Numbers over the 300 yard mark, and where he still had three minutes left in the third quarter. 14 times in just two years plus for Marino over that 300 yard mark, a measuring stick for a big passing day. Third and one, play action to Nathan, wide open. Harden knocks him out of bounds at the Denver 47, but Miami has another first down. Boy, that Nathan. It through the years, it seems as if he is always open. The way they use the wide receivers to clear out, and he always finds the right little slot. And again, a first down. Cleveland now leading San Diego, as you heard Bob Costas, 21-7 in the fourth. The other late games, the Jets 25-17 over Indianapolis. Rams with a 17-6 lead over the Falcons. And the 49ers have regained the lead against the Saints at home. Lorenzo Hampton, number one pick out of Florida, and he slashes for five. Six feet tall and 212 pounds, the ex-Gator. is around 100 yards rushing in his first three and a half games. Baseball, the finals today, the Mets beat Pittsburgh 9-7, to seven, while the Cardinals were losing at Montreal, so the Mets pull within three and go to St. Louis for three. Cincinnati, a shutout winner, 5-0. The Dodgers are playing the Giants and lead 3-2 in the seventh. 
second and five. Hampton again. He couldn't get around Roy Foster. Foster is pulling guard. Had been forced deep into the backfield by the Denver rush. And Hampton suffers a loss. Chance to watch this motion man coming across from the far side of your field on the left-hand side. Now watch the motion man come along. He'll tap the quarterback and go on by. Foster is going to pull from this position, and as he goes across, gets bumped back, and we'll show it after the play. We're getting a close, a quick count by Marino, who's up and ready to go. We'll come back and show you that play in just a moment. Third and nine. He breaks free at the 30. He's at the 20. Vince Heflin will score his first NFL touchdown. And Miami leads. Well, I think we'd rather show you the touchdown than that last play. <laughs> Let's give Vince Heflin a chance to celebrate. Heflin pressed into action here uh, most forcibly because of the injuries that continue to deplete the wide receivers of the Miami Dolphins. But there he is, number 88 Heflin, working solo on Louie Wright, number 20, fakes to the outside and gets Louie to bite right there and then spins away, actually from two people. Boy, that was Steve Foley, who was a deadly one-on-one -on -one tackler. He got away from two of them and broke into the end zone. 46-yard touchdown play, and now the extra point by Reves. Marino drives his team 75 yards in seven plays and caps it with a 46-yard Pass to Vince Heflin, who does some fancy running as he spins back inside to collect his first NFL touchdown. And it's the Dolphins by four, 27-23. Reves, he uses only a four-yard run-up. Short this time to Johnson. Vance Johnson down at the 29-yard line. Not Van Johnson, but Vance Johnson. The American League scores today as we go to the final week of the 1985 regular season. Minnesota swept the Royals three, one today, six to three, while the Angels were winners at Cleveland nine to three to salvage the final game there. The Angels go to Kansas City, first of a four-game series tomorrow night with a one-game lead over the Royals. The Yankees in the first game winning four nothing. Second game, they are winning again eight to two, but Toronto has won. Now it appears the Blue Jays are home free. No way. The Watson, oh my, does he take a shot from 49 William Judson. And that's that high pass where the receiver is so unprotected. What did Don Meredith used to call it, a medicine ball? He said after they throw you one like that, you've got to go get some medicine. Well, I'll tell you, Watson's going to need some. Just to offer official evidence of that, the Blue Jays over Milwaukee 13 to 5, and it appears for the first time we're going to have playoff action in the American League in Canada. Of course, the Expos had that honor a couple of years ago in the National, but Toronto apparently will be part of our featured coverage starting in a week or so. Whoa! First it's Watson, now it's Clint Sampson who has tumbled as he tries to go for that toss. Brzezinski and company were there, 59, Bob Brzezinski. What a good deal that was for the Dolphins to get him for, well, they had to give up a number two and a number three to the Rams in 81, but he has been solid. It was a bitter holdout. Uh, re or, uh, Shula very angry when uh, Brzezinski finally did come in, but they needed him desperately. Injuries have gotten them down to where they only had two healthy outside linebackers, and there he is playing after being in camp eight days. From the 29, it's third and 10 for Elway to Johnson. Ooh, look at that move. But he's not far enough for the first down again. Out of bounds at the 36, Bud Brown, who has made what seems like a dozen tackles today, has been brilliant in the deep defense of the Dolphins, denied the first down. Bright futures for those youngsters, Vance Johnson and Bud Brown. And the thing that uh, Shula likes about Bud Brown is the way he fits in. He said he's really an aware player, that the good kind of consciousness out there. He's a good thinker, and he's also a good hitter. Koslowski drops back to the 25 in Miami territory, and inside the 25 is Norman DePunt. Beautiful yeah. kick. Turns over the spiral. Koslowski takes a chance, and he's dropped by Hunter at the 23-yard line. Good delivery by Norman, and the Dolphins with the lead have the football inside the 25. And a reminder of our doubleheader action next Sunday. 
here on NBC. Most of you will see that Pittsburgh Miami game. Boy, that'll be a good start to things. Miami back home against the Steelers. New England and Cleveland. Buffalo, Indianapolis, the other early games. Merlin and I will be at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The Chiefs, three and one winners today. The Raiders, one at New England, two and two. San Diego, Seattle. The Jets at Cincinnati, Houston, and Denver completing our doubleheader coverage. to Nathan on a screen. And Tony Nathan driving across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. And that's close to another first down. Talked to Joe Collier yesterday about this Miami Dolphin team, and I asked him, I said, what strikes you when you look at them? He said, well, first, if you go back and look at last year, the sheer numbers are absolutely incredible. He said, looking at them this year, I'm only sorry that we couldn't have played them earlier in the season, referring to the fact that Marino finally is hitting his stride and finally getting those passes on target. Collier, of course, the veteran of so many campaigns, the man who put together this great orange crush defense, and he'd like the crush to come. Agreed. Hard to believe that there's snow on the ground here in Colorado. The temperature was 29 at the kickoff. Miami's been hot enough, 27-23 Dolphins. Here's a little flea flicker, and it works out to Bruce Hardy. Dennis Smith comes up to make the tackle. The Ball was whistled dead out at the 43-yard line. Two more rushing the football, 122 yards for Nathan. Nathan, all-purpose indeed. 14 minutes left in the game. Miami 27, Denver 23. Music looking to the sideline to get the defensive call. a new manner as they check on that penalty of kind of giving you a focus on the race within the various standings. First, Gene Barth. We had multiple fouls. Illegal block in the back on number 20. Illegal block in the back on number 34. When forced to one on number 20, it's a yard difference. It'll be 10-yard penalty and first down. What Mr. Barth is saying is the penalty against Wright was one yard closer to the Denver goal line, so they're going to give the Broncos the worst penalty, but not both of them. So they will start at their own 11-yard line. So in the AFC East, Miami up by four in this game, 2-1, and one, tied with the Jets 2-1. and one. The Jets lead Indianapolis at the moment in the fourth quarter by five. New England has lost their 2-2. Two and two. Indianapolis, of course, playing the Jets. Buffalo has lost 0-4. Kansas City, 3-1 a winner. Denver trying to win to tie the Chiefs, but down by four against the Dolphins. Deep in his 
own end, trailing 27-24. Down and five. Winder. Nothing there except Bob Brzezinski and company. Bo Camper was there as well. Jackie Schick. Let's go look at Bob Brzezinski, number 59, outside linebacker, graded out as the most durable and steady of the linebackers last year. That's Daddy Wright, 87, blocking on him. Brzezinski spins back. Well, that was a nice move, sensing the right time. He's got to stretch that play out. Was able to do that and then spin inside. And you saw scuba diving gloves to keep his hands warm. Those are rubberized gloves he's wearing out there on the field. Some of the receivers wearing them as well. Third down, four. Intercepted by Brzezinski, and perhaps those gloves might have been the difference in field. And you kind of sense the dual responsibilities of those linebackers. They have to be special athletes. You saw the Brzezinski playing the run. Now he's got to read the pass and get outside. The bump right there on Winder gets across in front of him. Well, maybe without those gloves, he'd have caught that football. I don't know. It was there. Hit him well, in a bad place. Again, the velocity of Elway's passes does protect him on occasion. Norman's been busy. Eighth time to the well. Kozlowski at the 38. And over end and short. Kozlowski all the way up to the 47. And Tony here. Miami with a ball and a four-point lead, 27-23. Moreno over the middle to Nathan. Who else? Smothered by Busick, and then to finish him off, number 50, Jim Ryan. Dwight Stevenson doing a fine job of controlling the nose man, Reuben Carter, number 68, down inside. Actually, all three of those defensive linemen really neutralized as Marino had plenty of time to pick out his receiver. What makes him so good, Merlin? I think it's his quickness, Dick, and his strength. He gets such remarkable position on those defensive linemen. Second and six. Nathan. Who? They had his number that time. Ricky Hundley, number 98. Number one pick of the Bengals and refused to sign with Cincinnati, so they traded him here for a number one and a number three. 6'2 two and 238 can run like the wind. And he did right there what he does best, just play the football with his nose. When he finally gets to where he can play the, the pass drops and the pass responsibilities, you better believe they're going to rush him into that lineup. He knows how to hit people. Third and seven. Denver with seven, eight men on the line of scrimmage. Marino going deep for Harris. And flags are down against Steve Wilson. Interference inside the 20. There's the man coverage and Marino waiting to the last moment and took quite a lick from Rulon Jones. Interference, 45 defense, first down. Stan Jones talked about the difficulty of getting to Marino. He said most of his passes are thrown relatively quickly. You see there the clear case of, well, a receiver being knocked off his feet before the ball arrived. You can Wilson. look back at the quarterback. That doesn't mean you no, can grab you the guy and throw him down at the same time. You can him off his feet that way. No question about that. Call a good one by the officials. And it puts Miami inside the 20-yard line with a first down. At the 19. Trying to add to their 27-23 lead, and the Broncos, of course, hope to uh, hold them to a field goal. Nathan, everyone but three had a piece of Nathan that time. Dick, to finish that thought, Stan Jones, who's the defensive line coach for the Broncos, times the, uh, the passes of the various quarterbacks, and he said most of the passes the Marino throws are thrown within 2.8 seconds or less. And he said, you know, if we run without anybody blocking us, that 10 yards to get back to the quarterback, that's about 1.7 seconds. He said that means we've got a, a one second to get rid of our blockers at the line of scrimmage. Well, good luck. That's 1,001. You mean you're not off the block yet? <laughs> Lightning quick, and basically they say hold your man to three, sometimes indeed hold your man for at least three seconds in protecting that quarterback. Lightning quick, and there it is again, but he had to throw it around. Good coverage by Wilson, intended for Duriel Harris. Wilson, who 
His daddy played with the Rams a few decades ago. TD Tommy Wilson. He went to Howard where he was a free agent pick of the Dallas Cowboys. This is where the Bronco defense traditionally has been very tough. They were 25th in the league last year if you counted on yardage. And yet, by the time you got through looking at them uh, in terms of points scored, they're nowhere near 25th. 210 plus yards for Marino plus three touchdowns over Elway. We welcome those viewers that are joining us from elsewhere in the NFL. Throw over the middle and a good play by Dennis Smith of the Broncos. And now flags go down and apparently it will be against the Broncos. This would be their second interference call on this Miami drive. The Dolphins lead 27-23 here in Denver with nine left in the fourth quarter. Cleveland has beaten San Diego 21-7. And on third down, the call against the Broncos. Dennis Smith coming from behind, perhaps with that hand in the middle of the back of the receiver. Let's watch that Moore right there. And you, see, you see Nathan coming to the outside. Moore is going inside, and let's watch the contact. There's the hand on the back, and you see Nat Moore pointing to it right there. You can't push that receiver from behind. And the fans, and that's down into the well of the 75,000-seat structure for Moreno. He's going to hear a lot of voices with nine minutes remaining in the game. I don't know if this is a timeout by Moreno or an official's timeout because of the noise. The ball is at the 13-yard line. Steve Busick heading to the sideline to get a call, and you saw Marino going over, getting a call, and taking it again from Don Strzok. Strzok signaling again from the sideline. Here it is. Well, oh, I don't know what that was. It looked like a draw call to me. <laughs> Let's see if that's how you'd read it. Woody Bennett and Tony Nathan behind Marino. He has thrown for three touchdown passes today. This way, Gene Lang scored after a Rulon Jones fumble recovery of Davenport's fumble at the 25-yard line. Lang 10 yards, 7-0 Denver. Then Marino to Moore, a 69-yard touchdown play, 7-7. A field goal for the Dolphins. Then Winder came back on a 7-yard run to make it 14-10. Then a field goal again by Reves of the Dolphins, 14-13. Then a Marino to Joe Rose, 24-yard touchdown pass made it 20. Kicked a field goal off the upright. Final play of the first half, 20 to 17. Winder skies. Marks out the signals. Second and 10 to Nathan. Trying to squirt through on that quick hitter. It gets to the 10 yard line. Plenty of orange crush there for him. 8.48 left in the game. It'll be third down from the 10 yard line and about seven for Don Shula, the 55 year old genius that has guided these Dolphins to winning seasons after winning. See, only one losing year in his career in Miami. You know what's amazing to me? You know, he's, he's had six streaks of 10 or more wins. No other coach has had more than two. That is amazing. That lantern jaw. field goal unit. Fouad, Reves, Don Strzok, number 10, will hold. Joe Rose, number 80, working on Harden, Mike Harden, 31, and Marino, I think, sensing that that was a hopeless case, fired that ball through the end zone with plenty of velocity to come to the sideline and turn it over to the field goal unit. Unless it's a fake, it'll be Reves, the rookie, trying to make it 10 out of 11, and this is first year in the to 23, Reves three for three field goal kicking, his short run up, and he hits a high spinner toward Vance Johnson at the two. He's got sprinter speed, and he's finally pushed
first out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Today's game is brought to you by RCA, creators of video technology that excites the senses. By Stroh's and Stroh Light, the circle of sports beer. And by Honda Motorcycles. Honda, follow the leader. And that kickoff return, a personal foul has been called against Miami. And that'll add 15 yards and put Denver in great field position at the 50. You see Reeves signaling. Well, we've got a shot of Reeves. I thought that was really a class act yesterday. Wind howling yesterday. Miami anticipating working out here in the stadium. They covered the field. Reeves made a special point of insisting that they get to Don Shula and tell him that they could come and work out at the Broncos facility. I think that's class. Out of the Broncos practice field, the north side of Denver. And the Shula and the Dolphins did just that. Over the middle to Clarence K. The big tight end is at the Miami 43-yard line. Fumbled the ball, but it was whistled dead. Jackie Ship made the tackle. It'll be second and three. Kay had caught only two balls coming into this in the first three games. Has a couple this afternoon. Kay, I'm sure happy to have a good game. Was offsides three times last week in that ball game, and he's had a better day today. Well, what a lineup tonight, along with Punky Brewster and Silver Spoon's old friends, Steven Spielberg. We welcome him to our NBC Sunday night. Alfred Hitchcock is back with great stories, and then Sylvester Stallone, Rambo, first blood. Now stay right where you are for the rest of a great Sunday night. Fumble, Winder fumbles, and Miami has recovered. Brzezinski comes up with a football, and just as the Broncos head to a march that might tie up the game, Miami gets a big hit. That ball popping free. The first turnover by the Broncos. Dick, it's something we talked about at the very beginning of the game. The cold weather makes it difficult to handle that football. It's getting colder in the stadium now. Winder has got two arms on that football, but it's stripped away. Looked like a good hit on the ball by Doug Better, 75. Number 59, Brzezinski, comes up for the out. From the 39, Miami leading by 7, 30 to 23. Seven minutes, 11 seconds left. Nathan. He clutches that ball firmly and picks up five more to the 43. Rolon Jones makes the hit. You can't blame him. He's working against a defense that turned the ball over, took it away from their opponents 55 times last year. There's Bob Brzezinski on the sideline. Very dependable, very solid. Very in a in sense of, of making errors, and that's something that Shula does not allow. <laughs> He's the kind of guy you want on your team because he rarely makes them. He's an intense studier of film. He constantly taking home the projector and checking on the offenses. Second and five. Marino on a safety valve. That is a forward pass, not a lateral. Behind the scrimmage, but a forward pass. And it was wise in this case that Nathan did not catch it because that would have been a three or four yard loss. I don't think he dropped it intentionally. I think he just looked upfield. He felt the pressure coming from the defense that had responded quickly and looked up before he caught the football. And that's the kind of error that you would anticipate from someone perhaps in high school. You don't always see it from an experienced receiver like Tony Nathan. Well, we didn't see it there either. <laughs> it was close. It was close. Trust this. Third and five. And a big down for the Broncos. They bring up eight men on the line of scrimmage. That's where Marino sometimes gets his long gainers. Mecklenburg has him for the sack at the 31. That is his sixth of the year. too much because if he gets tired it slows him down he started as a defensive lineman they've moved him back into a position as a linebacker although they employ him on the line of scrimmage in a three point six minutes left Roby punts it away hammers it deep Gerald Wilhine at the 19 and he returns to about the 20 former ex undersecretary of the health education and welfare and dad a medical doctor from the 28-yard line, Elway had a good fake. No 
one open. So he throws it away to Ricky Hundley along the sidelines. The play had fooled Miami's defense, but not the deep secondary. Well covered were the receivers. Final, Rams 4-0. The Bears and Rams, the only unbeaten teams, both winners today. The Broncos have used that play very effectively today to fake a run and then just drop Elway out with a planned rollout. He's had extra time every time he has done it. But on that play, as you indicated, the time didn't do him any good. Couldn't find anybody to throw the apple to. Five minutes, 50 seconds left. 30 to 23, Miami. Screen. Oh, that should be interference. But it's not called. That must have been too close to the line of scrimmage. It's behind the line of scrimmage, Dick, and there's no interference behind the line of scrimmage. So they won't call it. Although it was a play that set up very nicely. An excellent read by the offside linebacker to come across. Sanders Scheiber, number 96, all over the intended receiver. Gene Lang was right there at the line of scrimmage, so no penalty thrown. It'll be third and 10 from the 28. Clock stopped, 544 left. Watson to the right, Butch Johnson to the left, and Clint Sampson, the third wide receiver, slotted right. and Colts and it came down to the wire the Jets winning their third in a row 25 to 20 here it's Miami 30 Denver 23 Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen five minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter the lead has been exchanged on several occasions at halftime it was 2017 Miami Denver came out scored with the opening kickoff a march down the field directed by Elway and then Miami back with a touchdown and a field goal to lead by seven 30 23 Elway drills it incomplete to Clarence K at the 45 of Miami Jackie ship on the coverage the duel between Marino and Elway certainly is received more than your normal amount of publicity here in uh, mile high country but in those yards 186 they pale in insignificance to those accumulated by Marino who's well over 300 yards with three touchdowns Elway has seen uh, his team score on the ground today although I would say this they're only one play Elway's team is only one play away from tying this ball game second and ten Gene Lang and Lang was played well all day is all the way to the Miami 45 45 a first down Miami territory trailing by a touchdown Elway in trouble has a man open now and a first down at the 16 yard line Butch Johnson that is Elway's feet we talked about it earlier got the strong arm but his feet got him ready for it this is an experienced receiver who gets downfield, sees his quarterback in trouble, and comes back to the football right there. Elway hands it to him. Boy, he zipped it down there. Tremendous play by the Broncos. Again, Elway's mobility being the difference in that play. First down at the Miami 16. Clock running. We're at the four-minute mark. Dolphins 30, Denver 23. They each came in here two. The total yardage of Broncos more successful on the ground. The Dolphins through the air. Second and ten. In trouble now, and he throws it incomplete, and he gets away from the penalty by getting the ball near enough to Clarence K that he's not called for grounding. There's an indication watching Elway on that play that when he can't break free and really roll to the outside, he's a little frustrated. He doesn't have Marino's ability to, to watch his receivers and still sip. Now watch him going back and forth, doesn't quite know where to get, and is not able to keep his concentration downfield. I think that's one thing that Marino just has a marvelous sense about. Elway, on the other hand, when he can break free and roll, either left or right, is very effective in doing that. He'll buy some time now by employing the shotgun. Complete. 
by 45. Roberts so well. So well coming on a blitz was able to fly swat the pass down. It's fourth and ten and Dan Reeves has decided to go for the field goal or at least he's sending the field goal unit on. 333 on the clock. Reeves I guess believing that he is going to get another chance for his defense. We're going to we want to go. To, we're going to miss the field goal, or are we going to go to New York? Okay. <laughs> we're being asked to go for an NFL 85 update. I think we want to see how this field goal goes first. We've got a quarterback holding the ball. 34-yard attempt is good. So Carlos, I think he hit the goal. Hampton, the rookie, has some running room. 20, 30. Lorenzo Hampton all the way to the 45-yard line. And the Dolphins with 317 left. Actually, they'll say it wasn't down to the 47-yard line. Special teams letting the Broncos down here. Dan Reeves again opting to, to give his defense a chance to perform. And you might remember the snow on the ground will remind us that last year in a Monday night game, he won the toss, opted to kick the ball off, and his defense went down and in the first minute or so of the game had two touchdowns off bubble recoveries. Well, he's banking on a turnover here, or at least a quick stop by his defense. Denver has all three of its timeouts left. Miami has used one, so they have two. Quick toss to Nathan wasn't exactly smooth. Play out of sync. Dick, your eyes very quick on that one. Marino lost the handle as he took it from Dwight Stevenson. He finally got a hold of it and was able to flip it out. The ball should have been thrown there. And look, it's just late. And Nathan had to wait for it. That gave the defense time to get out and be ready for him. I believe that the Broncos would like to, would like to of course, have uh, Miami run the football, shut him down quickly here. I think Miami wanted to run that on first down. Gotten good yardage, but again, the Marino will go to the air here, I believe. Five, four seconds on the 30 second clock. He's going to use up all the time he can, and the two seconds showing takes a snap. And there's the ever present Tony Nathan tackled at the 48 in Denver territory, where it'll be third and three. And will Denver, 2.22 left, they do not use a timeout. They're going to let it roll all the way to the two. This, perhaps the biggest play of the game for both clubs. If Miami gets a first down, they can all but run out the clock. If Denver can stop Miami on third down and three, they'll get one final chance to go for what they now need, a touchdown to win it. They went for a field goal down by seven. Well, this is the play that Dan Reeves ended up staking his gamble on, really. He was gambling that his defense could stop Miami, that he would get another shot at a touchdown. If they can't stop them here, then the gamble fails, and he really has put himself in the hole. center trying to get the Mile High Stadium crowd in the game to help out as Marino brings his team out on third and three. A major shift offensively. Now it's only Nathan behind Marino. Under pressure, he gets it to Nathan, but Nathan does not get the first down. Dennis Smith what a hit. Ken Woodard with an assist. An all-out blitz coming at Marino. Marino read the blitz, got it to the hot back Nathan, but the defense reacted too quickly. They forced the fourth and long. Shula will go to the kick, and we've got to wonder now if maybe Denver might not try and block the kick. Here's the pass to Nathan. Would not surprise me to see them come after the punt here. Well, they're lined up to return. Lined up to return. All spread out. Kind of a compliment to the Denver defense in a way, Merlin Olson. Reggie Roby in the first three games punted only a total of six times. This is his seventh today. The other teams uh, not able to stop the Miami offense. Roby used sparingly. Six and three games, now seven against Denver this afternoon. Gerald Wilhite back at the 10. Come out of college.
Lawrence with a reputation as a finesse kicker. Seemed to be kicking it mostly into the end zone, kicking with full power. That's something he's worked hard on. And boy, it paid off here. And now the Broncos, a supreme challenge here. 97 yards away from the Miami end zone. And unless they get, get it down in there, they're going to walk out of here with a with an L on their side of the column. By the way, where is Shemokin? Where is Shemokin? I guess you have to have a light to find out. 97 yards away, and now that missed extra point all the more important. Elway from his end zone to Clarence K. With that short yardage, and it'll consume time. Jackie Ship with a tackle. And I don't understand that play at all. That's not going to get you enough yardage to do you any good. It only eats the clock. John, you got to get the ball deeper than that. Barking out as the clock running incessantly against the Broncos, taking a lot of time to set up the play. Second and six. Now he'll go deep to Watson. What a catch by Watson as he was being drilled. Broncos, his team trying to rally from four down. And the first down at the 29, only one timeout remaining. One minute left in the game as the rifle shot incomplete. Butch Johnson unable to haul it down. It would have been difficult to stay in bounds for him. 56 seconds left. Johnson with a chance to control that football, but it was not well thrown. He had to make a full 360 degree turn. There's Chuck Studley calling his defenses onto the field. He's been working at simplifying the defenses for this Miami Dolphins defense, trying to get more physical. They'd like to be very physical on the line and get a rush right here on John Elway. Around that 100 degree heat last week, they shut out Kansas City. 31 nothing. Elway getting out of trouble again. Anyone open? There's Will Hyde, a good catch by Will Hyde. He's out to the 37-yard line. That's not enough for a first down, so Well made the tackle. Clock is running, 38, 37, 36. No huddle. He'll bring him right to the line. They'll try and do it here. But Elway having to call to both sides. The clock ticking down, 29 seconds. Instead of calling two plays in the huddle, he's having to audibleize. Now looking big down the middle, intercepted. Bud Brown, and is it appropriate that he should get the Miami interception? He goes down at the 50-yard line with 13 seconds left. Bud Brown, a relative unknown, another B in that Miami killer B defense. He has been outstanding all day, making tackle after tackle, comes up with the first interception, and that kills the Denver threat, and apparently it'll be Miami that goes home 3-1. and one. Denver stays with 2-2. Two and two. Elway perhaps relying too much on that strong arm. Trying to gun the ball to Butch Johnson. Maybe not wanting to see those hovering defensive backs, but Brown just waited until the ball was thrown, stepped in front of Johnson, and picked it off. Dan Marino has served Don Shula well again today with three touchdown throws. And now it's just a matter of taking a snap and dropping to his knees. Denver will not use its final timeout. Satisfied that this one is over. The final seconds tick away. It's a good one. And the Miami Dolphins have beaten the Denver Broncos 30 to 26. One would have to wonder, and I'm sure coaches are always second guessing themselves. Reeves saying to himself, should I have gone on that fourth down? Should I have tried for that touchdown? Well, there's a man who's got to feel comfortable. He won't have to second guess himself in the films. Marino with big plays, a 69-yard touchdown to Moore. He had a 46-yard touchdown throw to Vince Heflin. Another 24 yards to Joe Rose. Elway did not have the touchdown throw. Came up with some key uh, pass completions, but it was on the ground with Winder and Lang that the Broncos did their most uh, serious damage. Well, and if we were to look at that Elway and Marino matchup for the day, indeed it was a Marino day today. But these two are going to be around a long time if they stay healthy and are going to be helping their teams to victories for many years to come. Now the Dolphins with three straight wins after the opening week loss at Houston, 30 to 26. They go back to the heat of Miami from the snow of Denver, but it wasn't so cold for Marino and that Dolphin offense. The final 30 to 26. We'll be back with all the scores of this day after these messages from your local station.